Hi there, this is Mike Gidding. If you take a modern approach to seismic interpretation, then you're going to be doing all of your interpretation in the 3D window. You'll be picking your horizons and your faults in the 3D window, and you'll also be adding all of your model data to the 3D window to inspect and edit. And this is the place we do all the business end of the interpretation. So where does that leave the interpretation window? Well, the interpretation window has a funny name these days because it's the only thing that I don't do in the interpretation window is interpret. But there are a few things that you can do in the interpretation window that I think are very useful. And I want to talk about a few of them today. So what can we do with an interpretation window? Well, let's start simple and we can use it as a display tool. The interpretation window is very useful because it shows the inline and crossline numbers across the top and it shows the time scale or depth scale down the side and it shows everything in a nice orderly fashion without any uh, distortions from perspective so that when you want to make an image for PowerPoint or something like that, it's a good place to start. For example, when you want to put a well on. So let's turn a well on. And there's our well location. Let's turn on a curve. There's our gamma ray. Turn that off again. And we'll go down and display a synthetic. Which comes in as a bitmap, which is the default, but it's a bit ugly. So I like to change that. That's pretty simple. We'll open up the settings. We'll go into here, we'll turn the bitmap off. We'll turn the wiggle trace on, we'll turn the positive and negative fill on, we'll give them sensible colours, and we'll turn our trace repeat count down to 1, and maybe change the gain to 2, and see what that looks like. Okay, that looks a lot better. So, if we're happy with that, we can go ahead and make a, an, a copy of that, either using the internal tools or some sort of screen grab. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. So let's have a look at how we can make that look even nicer for a PowerPoint. If you've built a volume-based model as part of your workflow, which is an activity that I would encourage at just about any scale of interpretation, then we can actually make this section look even nicer. So the first thing we're going to do is turn off our interpretation. We're going to turn off our well. And we're going to create a seismic ghost. We do that from our tool palette, making sure we choose the seismic ghost and not the polygon ghost. And we can draw a box for that ghost. Okay, and you can see things go a little bit fuzzy. And you'll actually find that ghost in the Windows pane. We'll immediately turn him off. And then we can go down to our model and find the zones that we created and turn those on. It takes a second to come up. And now we can go back and turn our ghost on. After that, we can turn on our faults, our model horizons. and go back to our input and turn our synthetic back on and you'll notice that the changes that we made to the interpretation window don't apply to the ghost so we have to do that as well and put the well stick on so we'll just go back and change those again and that gives us a pretty nice section now, of course, we can change the opacity of that ghost by opening up its settings and maybe put it at 60%. Then we see more of the background. Or if we put it at 20%, we see more seismic and less background. Even 10% might look good. Okay, so that gives us a much better 
looking section for a PowerPoint uh, meeting presentation which shows the work that we've done on the zone model at the same time. While we're talking about polygon ghosts, let's have a quick look at jump correlation in the interpretation window, which is another thing that we can't do in the 3D window. So this time you want to make sure that you choose the seismic polygon ghost. And we can draw a ghost by clicking and drawing a polygon like so. And the first problem we have is that the default is actually not for an opaque polygon but a translucent one. So I find myself con constantly changing the transparency to zero. Turn that down and now I'm conf confident in moving from fault block to fault block. Something like that. And you can see there that we're not quite at the same thickness as we move left, things are getting thinner. So to change the aspect ratio of this thing, we can just grab the little target reticule down the bottom and change the thickness to whatever we think suits. So something like that might be a little bit better to cover the distance from here to here. The other thing we can do with this if we hold down Control and Shift is spin it. So if you have a listrict fault, you can match either side when you've got a change in dip on one fault block to another. I might also add here that we also have the possibility of creating a polygon ghost that is a rectangle similar to the one we can access via the other tool, the Insert Manipulate Seismic Ghost. And it behaves pretty similarly, except we do have the option of rotating that as well. But we have to use the other tool, the Insert Manipulate Seismic Ghost, if we want to post modeled horizons over the top, which is why I introduced the other tool first. This one doesn't have that facility. Another very nice feature of the interpretation window is the ability to build a reconstruction model. These are very handy when you want to QC your fault throws or even maybe a horizon pick when you jump across from one fault block to another. So let's have a look at how these work. Let's change to a different seismic interpretation on another cross line. And the reason we've done that is that the interpretation here goes from end to end between the fault blocks. This makes for a much better reconstruction model. So it's worth going and filling in any gaps you have before you start one of these. When we want to build a reconstruction model, we go to these four icons on the right hand side of the shortcut toolbar and we will choose the very far right one on the bottom row called Reconstruction 2D. When we open that up, we'll hit Create New, we'll create a demo, and now we can add our seismic interpretation horizons and faults. They come in two tabs down here. Layers is seismic interpretation horizons and we can go and add them layer by layer but there are a couple of shortcuts here. We can use all the visible horizons or we can select them from the input pane. So let's go over here and we'll select a set of horizons, press S and in they come. And add the faults. We'll do this a different way. We'll choose all the visible faults and they come in as well we can actually see that this is not the visible faults on this plane but all the visible faults available from the input pane, anything that's turned on. Now we'll go back to the layers and we'll organize these via the relationships between the horizons. We do that under the stratigraphy column and we can see the first two are conformable. We come down to the green event which is 12 and that has truncations above and below which makes it discontinuous and then the yellow and the purple events here, which are 20 and 25, are both erosional. And then for the sake of the reconstruction, we're going to assume that everything below that is conformable. And you can see some downlaps in here, but the bounding surfaces for that prograding event seem to be reasonably conformable. So let's assume that they are, that they are just that. Okay, 
that we're almost ready to go. Let's change the mesh resolution to fine and hit OK. Nothing happens. And that's exactly what you expect because we haven't toggled the reconstruction on yet. So to see the reconstruction, what we do is we right click and choose this icon here, which is toggle on reconstruction. And we can see it's done a pretty good job, except maybe on the right hand side here where we've run out of data a little bit. And there's another problem here as well. We can see here that we've got this funny hiccup here. And if we go back and have a look at our untoggled section, the problem is that this fault doesn't actually break the unconformity, even though we have a big discrepancy in the thickness either side of that fault. So we'll have to extend that fault to cut the unconformity, as I've done with all of these others, to make sure that we have no more of those problems. The other issue we had was over here. Before we dive back in, let's have a little bit of a look at that using some of the analytical tools within the model. So here's our demo one, and you'll see that there are a set of attributes here. If we turn on shearing, for example, we can see that there is a big problem here. So we will, we will try and deal with that now. We could also turn on the dilatation. And we see that we've got a few little issues in here, particularly related to this hourglass, but nothing too major. But let's see if we can solve this problem up in the top right corner at the same time as extending this pink fault. So we'll turn those off. And we will go back here and hit F and just draw a fault in exactly the same spot, but crossing the unconformity. Okay, over here we've got a slightly different problem. I think what we need here is a little antithetic. So we'll create a new fault. It'll be down the bottom of our long list. We'll turn him on. And we'll put a fault in here. And we'll probably have to adjust this horizon at the same time. Right, now that that's finished, we can make sure that we go back to our model parameters. And to that set of faults, we need to add a row. And drop in fault interpretation 1. Hit OK. And then we will refresh the model. OK, and now we can toggle it back on. And you can see things behave much better over here and much better over here. If we check our shearing, we've got a much better result in this area. Probably means that my pick in that little grub in there wasn't quite right, but otherwise it looks OK. So those are a few things that we can do with the interpretation window. Sadly, none of those are interpretation, and I strongly recommend that anyone considering interpretation in Petrel use the 3D interpretation window as their main activity base. If you'd like to know more about seismic interpretation training, please get in touch. Thank you.